Let's get into some of the impressive and standout performances from this Tour de France. Um, sprinters not named Peter Sagan, Caleb Ewan in his um, debut Tour de France, phenomenal performance. Yeah, Caleb Ewan got three stage wins this year. Uh, if you remember last year, he was snubbed by Mitchelton Scott. They did not take him to the Tour de France. It was this big stink. It was hugely disappointing for Caleb. He transferred uh, teams at the end of that season, went to Sudal Lotto. And while he had a bit of a slow start to the year, he has come through in such a big way for his new team come Grand Tour season. He won two stages at the Giro d'Italia and just proved that he is the quickest man of them all at the Tour de France this year. He yeah, did an amazing, amazing job at the Tour all the way through to the Champs-Élysées where he won the Sprinters Classic. Yeah, I mean, this is the biggest win in the world if you are a sprinter, um, maybe outside of Milan, San Remo, and there is no more important victory. And I think for you, and this was actually his first time to finish a Grand Tour, so winning on the Champs-Élysées on the final stage of the Tour de France, what a huge achievement for him. Julian Alphilipp, obviously the other standout performance, the man that has made uh, bike racing just incredibly exciting over the last few years, really lit this Tour de France on fire. We were all expecting him to attack and win a stage. I don't think nobody was expecting him to hang on to the yellow jersey all the way to the Alps. Yeah, every day that Julian Alphilipp kept the yellow jersey just raised more and more questions in my mind about who could actually win the Tour. Everybody wrote him off, including even himself, that he was not going to uh, manage to stay in the yellow jersey even to the third week. He kept it through the Pyrenees, and it was, wasn't was until stage 19. Incredible ride by Julian Alphilippe. I do have a bit of a hot take uh, regarding this, so I really do not want to see Alphilippe have this be a turning point in his career where he starts to target Grand Tours because what he's doing right now is just so good. He is such a fun racer to watch, and he wins everything. He wins so many things, and I would be very, very worried to see him try to change his rider type to be able to ride like a Chris Froome and a Garen Thomas, just a diesel uphill. That is an alpha leap. He did an amazing job and almost won the whole tour, but I don't want him to upset the apple cart by trying to focus on that. Yeah, I mean, this is a racer who has given us so many exciting moments this year, from winning Strada Bianchi, Milan San Remo, even winning a field sprint at uh, Torino Adriatico. You know, I think I've had the same thought about him, you know, focusing on becoming a Grand Tour rider, and I think the draw of winning the Tour de France is so big, how could you not? I mean, that is, if you win the Tour de France, you are the best bike racer in the world. I know Julian Alaphilippe is the number one ranked bike racer in the world, but you know this is the cream of the crop to win the Tour. And I think the one thing that could make him want to go after Grand Tour wins is that time trial victory. That time trial victory over Grand Thomas was insane, phenomenal. I know he was wearing the yellow jersey. He said he was, you know, um, motivated by the cheers on the road, but still, I mean. If he can just climb a little better, why can't he win, the, win a Grand Tour? But I will say, I don't think he needs to focus just on being a Grand Tour rider, on winning the Tour de France. We're seeing in this day and age, so many riders doing so many things well, from riders like uh, Wout Van Aert to even Alejandro Valverde racing the Tour of Flanders. I mean, it's just a really exciting time in bike racing where racers are kind of doing it all. And I think Julian Alaphilippe can continue to do it all, but maybe, Try and go for the GC.